see if we can squeeze that one into this same video and not have it be too big to be downloaded. Um, we've got a solution of benzoic acid. It's dissolved in benzene. The picture here is the kind of abbreviated structure of benzoic acid. Um, and this uh, solution has a freezing point of 3.1 degrees C and has a boiling point of 82.6 degrees C. Then we're given the freezing point and the boiling point of the pure material for comparison. And we're given the constants as well. And then down below, we want to we're asked what can we conclude about the state of benzoic acid molecules at the two different temperatures. Right? So there's a lot of data there for calculation, but we're meant to draw some sort of conclusion about what's happening. <laughs> so what we need to do here is use the data we have and try to do some calculations. So let's start. We're given freezing point first. Let's start with the freezing point. The freezing point of the solution here is 3.1. And the freezing point of the pure material is 5.50. That means we have a change in freezing point of minus 2.4 degrees Celsius. Now, we know that can allow us to calculate um, molality of this solution, because we do have the constants up there as well. So if I rearrange my freezing point equation, the temperature change divided by the constant would equal the molality of the solution. So that would be minus 2.4 degrees C over minus 5.12 degrees C. Per molal. Um, so degrees C cancel out. This would give us 0.46875 molals is the concentration of the solution at the freezing point. Well, that doesn't give us too much to go on yet in terms of drawing any conclusions, but let's see what happens if we do the other calculation. We also have information about the boiling point. So the boiling point of the solution is 82.6 degrees C, and the boiling point of the pure solvent is 80.1 degrees C. So if we subtract there, the change in the boiling point is 2.5 Celsius. Now, if we do the same thing with our boiling point calculation, we can calculate what the molality of the solution is at the boiling point. So, temperature change was 2.5. The constant for boiling point is 2.65. And so, already you might see there's, there's a bit of a difference there in terms of the constants although the changes were about the same. Divide through there, and the concentration is 0.9434 um, at the boiling point. Now, this is interesting because this is the same solution. What we're seeing is it looks like there are close to twice as many. In fact, I think this is a little more than twice as many. So if we just compare boiling point to freezing point in terms of these molalities, 9, 4, 3, 4, divided by 4, 6, 8, 7, 5. It's a little more than 2, 2.01. So it looks like there are about two times as many particles in solution at the boiling point as there are at the freezing point. But we can't even quite explain this by the molecule breaking into two pieces, because that shouldn't get us above two. Um, so what is happening here? Right? Now, I think what's fair um, for a student at this point would be to be able to figure this out, that it appears that there's more particles at high temperature than at low temperature. But there's really two things happening here that help explain this. One, again, is an equilibrium, like I just was discussing for um, HF or hydrogen fluoride. Um, this is an acid. Benzoic acid is a weak acid. There is a reaction where the acid donates a proton to water. And that's an equilibrium. Again, it's two arrows. But there is a process by which this can break into two pieces. And that's probably contributing to some of what's happening here. 
this is breaking into two pieces a little bit. This is a weak acid, not a strong acid, so it doesn't completely break apart. So at high temperatures, we're seeing a little more of this reaction being moved to the product side, away from the reactant side at lower temperatures, kind of the opposite. The other thing that's happening here is this type of molecule, uh, carboxylic acid, that has this group on here, carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then a carbon bonded to a hydrogen. And it doesn't really matter what's over here, so I'm just going to use a standard abbreviation R here. These molecules form um, dimers in solution. So DI as a prefix means two, and mer refers to molecule. So what happens is they can line up in a way that there's a pretty strong set of hydrogen bonding interactions between the two molecules. And those two molecules start to behave as if they're one particle in solution. So that's also happening here. What we're seeing is at low temperatures, these molecules are linking together. That's reducing the apparent number of particles in solution. That interaction is more likely to be broken at higher temperatures. And we're seeing the molecules act more like they're separated into pieces at high temperatures. OK, that wraps up chapter 11. So we'll continue in the next video with chapter 12.